Welcome to Mile High Reefers. I'm Scott Anderson, and if you've watched some of my videos, you know I keep a lot of Montipora in my tank. And in this video, I wanna talk about why I like it so much. Now, I could go on a website and kind of read off how to keep it, but really what I wanna to talk to you about is why I think it's so cool and give you guys a little bit of my experience of keeping Montipora for about five years now. The things that stands out to me the most about Montipora has gotta be the color. There is so much color variety out there. In fact, if you can think of a color, you can probably find it in a Montipora. You will find them in single colors. You will see different color bases and different color polyps. You can see the edges being different colors and they can be incredibly extreme and incredibly beautiful. But the color options are really what makes Montipora stand out. Now, in my experience, to maintain good color, you want good calcium, alkalinity levels, and they don't have to be perfect, but you want them to be kind of in the normal ranges and stable. You also want good magnesium level, but the biggest thing that I've noticed with color is you want really blue lights. Blue lights will bring out the color in Montipora better than anything else I've noticed. So if you have healthy coral and you're not getting the color out of it, try bluer lights and see what that does for you. The next thing that makes Montipora so cool are the growth patterns. It comes in three main different varieties. You can have your encrusting, branching, and plating. Now the plating is probably the most common you're gonna see out there. And one of my favorites, you can see smaller plates and bigger plates. Now your water flow is gonna affect how the plates grow. But you'll never really be able to control how the platelets grow. It's just gonna be working with the coral and letting it do its thing. Also, encrusting corals. They look really cool, but they like to grow over everything and they're almost impossible to get off once they've grown over. So keep that in mind when purchasing. The other thing is you're gonna see lots of corals that have attributes of all three. Like this sponge oat. It's got platelets, it's big and thick like an encrusting coral, and yet it's got the branches starting to sprout off of it too. It's just a really cool look. And within Montipora, there are no rules as far as I can tell. There are every possible look that you might find attractive for your tank. So now let's take a minute to talk about price. You can spend pretty much as much money on a frag as you want. Go find a name on with tons of color and you can spend hundreds of dollars without a problem. But you can also buy $10 frags. And that's actually most of what you see in my tank are the inexpensive, non-name, small frags that I've grown into large colonies. This huge colony you're looking at is probably about a foot and a half from the left side to the right side and I bought it three or four years ago as a $10 frag. It was 10 bucks, and over the years, it's grown into this massive thing that has died off, come back, died off, and look at it today, it's amazing. But really, none of the frags in my tank were expensive. This sponge out was a $40 frag when I bought it. This purple Montipora was a $15 frag. The encrusting money, 10 bucks. This huge colony, I bought it as a colony. We took it out of the tank at Animal Attractions, their main display, 75 bucks. No doubt, because I know the owner and been shopping there for 20 years. But there are deals to be had. A lot of new hobbyists are afraid of money for them when they first get into the hobby. But it's been my experience that they're not actually that difficult. If you can maintain good water quality, you've got a lot of light availability, and you've got decent water flow, there's a good chance you can keep money for up. So calcium and alkalinity are gonna be key factors to keeping these animals alive. They're a calcium-based animal, so they need that calcium and alkalinity in the water. So I usually target in that kind of 400 to 450 range for my calcium and alkalinity, you really wanna be between seven and 10, I'm usually around eight. And stability is better than nailing a number. Now recently, my alkalinity has fallen off. It fell off to 
four because I wasn't watching my calcium reactor. And my corals were fine. So it's not as critical as you might think, at least not in my situation. Now, lots of light. I run T5s and LEDs. This setup, I think it's brilliant for Manipura. Like I said earlier, lots of blue light and good water flow. They don't actually have to have a raging torrent of flow, but if you can get them a good flow, they'll definitely be better for it. So if you're looking to get into Manipura, I totally suggest just going to the LFS, picking out an inexpensive frag, putting it in your tank, and see how it does. I think you'll have a very good chance that you'll be successful if your tank is relatively established. If you've been keeping coral in your tank for three or four months, you're probably good to try some money or out. Anyways, thanks for watching this episode of Our Reefers. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.